Hello, my name is Emma and in today's video I am going to help you with your pronunciation of a sound in English that's very difficult, okay? And that sound is uh, the R sound or the R sound. This sound is very challenging, okay? When I was a child, I could not say this sound. So when I wanted to say words like rabbit, I used to say it like a W, like wabbit. So for people who speak English, this sound can be very difficult when they're children and growing up, but also for people from other countries learning English, this sound can be very challenging, okay? So I'm going to give you some tips on how to um, pronounce, the, sorry, how to pronounce the sound and things you can do to help so you can get better uh, with some practice. So let's get started. My first tip, for learning how to make this sound is being able to hear it when people speak. So a lot of the times people from other countries, their ear isn't trained for English. So for example, um, they might hear light and right as the same thing. When in fact, here I'm making an L sound, so light, and here I'm making the R sound, right. So for some people, they hear it as the same. When in English, they're actually different sounds. Um, I know some Brazilian students sometimes have a little bit of difficulty because in, uh, in their language, the R sound sounds more like an English H, okay? So sometimes I hear Brazilian students, when they want to say red, they say head. Okay, whereas sometimes um, with some Asian students, you might hear right and light sound the same way. Um, another mistake we often hear in English is people might say rail and whale the same. This was the mistake I used to have trouble with when I was a kid and I couldn't hear the difference, but there is a difference. Um, and then we also have pilot versus pirate and honey versus runny, okay? So what we are going to do is first off, the question to ask yourself is, can I hear the difference between an R sound and another sound? This is the first area you should be practicing if you have trouble with your R pronunciation. So I'm going to say an R sound, and then I'm going to say one of these words. And I want you, to choose which word I said, okay? So did I say the same word or did I say a different word? So let's get started. The first word is right, okay? And I'm gonna cover my mouth because sometimes if you look at my mouth, you can notice some differences. So the first word, right and light. So which one did I say? If you said light, you're correct. I said right and light. All right, let's try another one. The next sound is red. So listen carefully to what I'm saying. Red and red. Did those sound the same? Those are the same sounds, so I said red and red. All right, let, let's try another one. So this word is rail, so rail and whale. Did you hear the difference? I said this one, rail and whale. Okay, let's try over here. So the word is pirate, so pirate and pilot. Did they sound the same to you or different? I said pirate and pilot. Okay, and now let's try the last one. So this is runny. So runny and runny. Were those the same or different? So they were the same. I said runny and runny. Okay, so it's good to listen to as many uh, different R sounds as possible and really try to hear 
um, the R sound, because sometimes if you speak a different language, you might not hear it. The next thing you can do is you can actually listen to R words in sentences, because this makes it a little bit harder, okay? So once you're able to hear the difference here, you can actually try to listen to the difference in sentences, okay? So I'm going to use these words in these two sentences, and I want you to pick which word I'm using. Am I using these words, or am I using the R words, okay? And sorry, I should have said this earlier, the difference in R is actually in the middle of the word here, whereas in all the other ones, the R starts the word. So let's get started. Do you have, so do you have the light suitcase? Which one did I say? Okay, I said light. Let's try with how it would sound with this one. Do you have the right suitcase? In this case, I use this one. Where is the red? Which one did I say? Where is the red? I said this one. Where is the whale? Did you hear this one? Because that's what I said. Where is the whale? Where is the rail? Okay. Where is the pilot? Which one did I say? I said pilot. Okay, so I pronounced the L, not the R. Where is the pilot? Where is the pirate? So try to really hear the difference. And finally, um, where is the runny? So which one did I say? So I said runny. That sent last sentence did not make any sense, but that's okay because we're focusing on pronunciation, not um, meaning. So where is the honey? Where is the runny? Okay, so the very first step when you're learning pronunciation, a very good step to take, is can you hear the difference? Once you can hear the difference, um, or you know, keep practicing this, we're gonna do the next step, which is practicing how to say the sound. So that's coming up next. Okay, so you may have to practice listening to the R a lot, um, but once you're ready to practice making the sound, the first thing that's very important to know is that there are different ways to make the R sound in English, okay? So if you're having a lot of trouble uh, maybe you've been taking classes before and you just can't get that sound. It might be an idea to try a different way to pronounce R because there's more than one way. So let me tell you a little bit about the different ways. The first way to make the R sound or the R sound is we call the bunched R. And what we do is these are your teeth, this is your tongue, and when you make the sound, your tongue moves backward. Okay, so it kind of goes up at the back, and we call that the bunched R sound. Now for me, that actually is a harder way to make an R. The way I like to make the R is what we call the retroflex way. In this way, um, you have your, this is the bottom of your mouth, this is your tongue, and your tongue moves up, but it doesn't touch the roof of your mouth. Okay, there's a little bit of space, but the main thing is when you make the R sound, your tongue moves upward, the front of your tongue. So some people find this way easier. Other people might find the bunched R easier. Um, in this video, we're going to talk mainly about the retroflex R because that's the one that I do, okay? Um, but if you're interested in the bunched R, um, it's a really good idea to look for resources about that because it can also help. So in terms of the uh, different R sounds, the other thing I wanted to say is our R sound changes if we're saying it after a vowel. So we use these two before a vowel. So for example, if I said the word rabbit, or if I said the word um, run, we have the R first, and then we have a vowel sound. So we use these two for that. Sometimes in English, we have a vowel like the O sound or the A sound, 
and then the R. So for example, or, er, R. We make these R sounds a little bit different as well. So in this video, I'm focusing specifically on the retroflex sound. So what we're going to do is we're going to practice some R words using um, R at the beginning of the word, because these are usually the easier ones to start with, okay? For some people, uh, these sounds are easier, but I find in general, starting with R at the beginning of the word is the easier way to go. So what you can do is when you're learning a new sound, it's a good idea to practice your pronunciation slowly, okay? So you say the sound very slow and you stretch it out, okay? So if I was saying ra, um, I'd say ra. And what I can do is after I'm saying it slow, I can get a mirror and I can actually look at what I'm doing when I'm making the sound and I can really think, okay, what are my teeth doing? What are my lips doing? What is my tongue doing? And by looking, using a mirror and thinking about these things, it can really help you make the sound properly. Um, I also like to start um, using just the R and a vowel first because I think that's easiest. So saying ra or ro or re, okay? And just pairing the R with a vowel can help, um, you know, instead of saying a really hard word like, um, you know, ridiculous, which is very long, it's actually easier to start your pronunciation with a small part of the word. So just using the R with a vowel is a good idea. Um, the other thing you can do is sometimes using another sound can help you find where your tongue should be. So for the retroflex, if you make a D sound, so say da, da, your tongue actually goes up, kind of like the R does, da. The main difference is that your tongue, when you make a da sound, is the top of your tongue is touching the roof of your mouth. For an R sound, your tongue should go up like a D, but it does not touch, okay? So you can start with da, now say ra. Okay, so your tongue is in the same area. One of the major differences is your tongue's not touching. But using another sound like a D can help you find where your tongue should be when you make the R sound. Um, okay, some other tips is when you make an R sound, it's good to keep your teeth together, okay? It's good to, like I said before, for the retroflex, you want your tongue to move up, but you don't want to touch the bump at the roof of your mouth, okay? So like I said before, do not touch the top of your mouth when you make an R sound. All right, so now let's practice making some R sounds together. Okay, so before we start practicing, I just wanted to say a couple of things. First of all, it takes a lot of time and practice to get good at pronunciation, okay? So if uh, you just do this a couple of times and you're having a lot of difficulty with it, that's okay. Pronunciation takes time and practice, okay? The second thing I wanted to say is that um, it's really good to have somebody who speaks English listen to you practice, if that's possible, because you don't want to make mistakes and practice them again and again and again, because then it's gonna be harder to learn how to do it the right way. So it's good to have somebody listen and tell you, yes, that was a good R sound, or no, you that sounded like a W, okay? And two different types of uh, professionals can do this. There's somebody called a speech pathologist who can help you with your accent reduction or pronunciation of sounds like R, or an English teacher can also help you do this, okay? So you can check around, um, and if you don't have access to either of these, if you know somebody who speaks English, maybe they can help you as well, okay? Um, so the main thing is you need to practice this a lot and it's good to have somebody listen to make sure you're doing it correctly. If there's nobody and you still really want to practice, you can also try to maybe listen to yourself by tape recording yourself doing these sounds. Although again, if you can't hear the difference, it might be hard to um, notice the difference when you say the sounds, okay? So those are just some options. Um, okay, 
So the first thing I want to do is I told you one way to get this R sound is by making a D sound because they're in a similar area of your mouth when we make the sound. So I want you to say D, D. Okay, and feel where your tongue is when you say that, D. Now I want you to say D re, D re. Okay, so this is saying D and re, the D sound and the R sound, D re. Okay, now what I want you to say is deed. Okay, feel where your tongue is at with that, deed. And now let's try an R word, read, read. And again, going slow is really good when you're first learning how to pronounce the sound. And if this is too hard, just try to make the re sound without the ending. Re, read, read. Okay. Now I want you to practice this five times. Let's try to say read five times. Read, 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 read. Okay, good. Now let's try another word. Um, so I have here the word ray. So let's, let's say this word first, ray, ray. Okay, now if you're having trouble, maybe start by saying the word day. Day, ray, day, ray. Now let's just try to say this one five times. Ray, 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 ray. And you're noticing I'm doing it really slow. Ray. And now I can also speed it up if I'm pronouncing it correctly. I can say ray. Okay, so now we have the word red. Okay, we have dead and red. So I want you to try to say this word five times. Red, 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 red. And again, it's great to do this while looking in a mirror to make sure that your tongue is actually moving upward. Red. Okay, now let's do the last word for today. We have done, if you're trying to find it where your tongue should be, done. Run, 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 run. And one more time, run. Okay, so I hope that helps figuring out where your tongue should be. Um, this is just one trick. There's a lot of different ways um, to find where your tongue should be when pronouncing the R. Um, use what works for you, you, and remember to use a mirror. So once you're able to say R words, the next step is to try to say it in a sentence, okay? So you can say the word first, red, and once you get good at saying this word, then you can try it in a short sentence, I read. And then you can make it a little longer, I read it. And then you can make it even harder to say, I reread it, and so on. And so you can make it longer and longer and longer as you get better and better at your pronunciation of R. So again, these are just some tips to help you in your pronunciation of R, and it takes time, practice makes perfect, and also finding somebody who can listen to make sure you're saying it right is very helpful. So thank you for watching this video. Um, I hope you have learned a lot about R pronunciation, and if you want to practice what you've learned, you can come visit our website at www.ingvid.com. There you can do a quiz to um, practice some of the ideas we came up with today and some of the things we talked about. You can also um, subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of other pronunciation resources there, as well as resources on vocabulary, writing, reading, um, essays, uh, just so many different topics. Um, so. I invite you to come check that out. Until next time, take care.